I answer Ask Pierre's. So we got a couple of Ask Pierre questions and um, I'm going to try to answer them to the best of my ability. But first, I would like to see more subscribers for 2022, so I know some of you are sort of watching without committing. That would be fine if like, we were a generic Reddit channel where we featured stupid Reddit content and other things that nobody really cares about, but we're not just here to entertain you, we're here to sort of promulgate the classic Mercedes cult, so if you could subscribe that would be nice. Um, so these people are subscribers actually and they're Patreon supporters and so that's why I'm going to answer the question. So Thomas sent me this question from one of our Patreon subscribers. Our subscriber says, hey I love your content. I bought a 79 450 SL a few months ago and was wondering why the European version of the car has over 200 horsepower and mine has 180. Even the earlier U.S. ones have more. If the engine is fundamentally the same, is there a way to get back some of that power without going outside of Mercedes? I saw the Karobu video and don't want to mess it up. So I think our, um, our asker is asking about Karobu engineering and also asking why the 79 450 has only 180 horsepower. Well, with these early 450s, it boils down to content, I mean, uh, compression, and the content of the valve train. So 450 SLs to the European market had 8.8 .8 to 1 compression. They had more aggressive camshafts. Um, they also had a more um, they also had a more aggressive cam profile and they had a freer flowing exhaust system. And so in order to tap into that horsepower stream which is about 228 horsepower from the european cars and get a u.s car kind of sort of all the way there there are three or four things you can do an inexpensive upgrade that requires some additional labor involves installing camshafts from a 560 sl or sel or um, 420 sel they're all kind of the same but the 86 and later cars um, you have to get the camshaft with the match set of cam supports if you're looking for used parts and you need to be really careful torquing those cam stands down because what you don't want to do is you don't want to distort the amount of pressure on the cam but in your 450 sl you can install these 560 cams and you'll get a little bit more power out of them you might find 10 to 15 more horsepower now what else can you do well Starting in 19, um, 1975 or 76 on the Euro cars, they did a more complex exhaust system where they split the exhaust into a left and a right side. On the US cars, they sort of merged everything into one large single exhaust. So this restrictive exhaust doesn't help that much. Um, if you can stomach it, the cost of European exhaust parts is about $2,200, 22 dollars to 2500 And if you have a needed exhaust system, and this is a no catalytic converter, free flowing European style exhaust. So the exhaust system you want to look up would be for um, a 1980 or earlier Euro 450 SL, so like a European market car. And um, you can look up all these parts on mbepc.net or mbtila catalog. That's tila catalog in German. Dot de, and then these will sort of hold some of the secrets. Now, there are some other ways that you can get a little bit more power out of the car that are less difficult. Um, a lot of these cars had ignition timing that was dialed back, so you can bump the ignition timing a little bit. And that'll give you a tiny bit more power. Um, you can also, um, let's see here, what else do I like to do? The, the, um, let's see here, there were a couple more items. A no caller. And we'll call back my father in law in a second. There are a couple other little things that you could do as well. 
Um, these include uh, making sure you don't have any manifold vacuum leaks or making sure your timing chain isn't stretched and replacing it if necessary because these things will actually renew your uh, engine and make it perform better. So some of them are not even performance upgrades at all. They're just repairs. Okay, so our next question comes from Paul and he says, I have a transmission question. I have an 84 Euro with a four-speed auto and it's starting to leak from the front pump and main seal. Given it has 300,000 miles, I'm just going to install a rebuild, but wanted to find out who offered the best rebuilt transmissions. I know the Metric Motors is the engine place, but I have not heard of a transmission builder. So you have a few options. You have Sun Valley Mercedes transmissions in Van Nuys, $1,500 to $2,000. You get a rebuilt torque converter and transmission. You also have Precision Automatic Transmissions, which specializes in Mercedes transmissions. Um, you have transmissions by Ron in Atlanta. And then last, you can buy rebuilt transmissions from Adsit Company. Who do I deal with? Well, I deal with performance. I know, I deal with uh, Sun Valley because Sun Valley is probably, has probably the best customer support. But in your case, Paul, I don't know. I actually pull the transmission and reseal the front pump into our converter because if the transmission's not bad, why worry about it? These things are really robust and they actually last for a very long time. All right, so Raj sends a question. I think this is about his 300 SD. I cleaned the fuel level sending unit inside and out after watching your video gauge reads. Fine now, but after the tank is below half, it jumps around a lot. Seems to stay put when tank is over half full. Thoughts? Well, I have two thoughts. One, it may just be time for a sending unit because the contacts are unreliable on the float. But another thought I have is putting the entire sender, the float and the wires and everything assembled as one unit with the outer tube removed and an ultrasonic cleaner and cleaning everything carefully and slowly using ultrasonic power to keep, to, to try to make sure that the contacts are as clean as possible. We've had a lot of luck using ultrasonic cleaners or fine electrical parts, and because your fuel cinder uses a resistor wire, it has to stay totally clean. So between you and me, the ideal route would probably be a new cinder, but in case you really, really want to give it that last go, find an ultrasonic cleaner and, and use that, because there's no way that using, unless you use like acid or something, which is kind of risky, you really can't get the cleanliness out of the resistor wire and the contacts on the float that you need using a conventional method like a brush. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and send me your questions, or rather send your questions to Thomas, and they'll get answered in a week or two. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoy working on your Mercedes in this new year, and if you're buying one of these cars for the first time, I'd love to hear from you and hear what you're buying. In the meantime, like, share, and subscribe, tap the bell for notifications, leave us a thumbs up, and enjoy working on your classic Mercedes.